Today we're going to be talking about ragdoll physics inside of Unity. Now, what exactly is ragdoll physics? It's a procedural animation tool that lets you animate something that is dying or being thrown and doesn't have control of its limbs anymore. And it just generates this cool animation for the arms and the legs. So it looks like the model is flopping around naturally and you don't have to animate it. And depending on what it hits, it will be a different look as opposed to just a static animation. So it's really cool and it's really powerful. For the King uses to great effect. Whenever you got like a killing blow, ragdoll physics would kick in and it would just make it look like the, the, the creature you were killing would just flip and flop and it just made you feel powerful and it's a really cool thing. So inside Unity here, we have a model of a Minotaur. It's low poly, trying to kind of follow suit after For the King. And it has an armature that has been rigged to the model itself. All you need to do for, for ragdoll physics is each bone needs to basically be parroted to a root bone, which we have. And then you also need a rigid body, a collider, and some sort of joint. I use configurable joints. You do this on the whole model and you're good to go. So I'm only going to do a little bit because it could take upwards of 30 minutes and we just want to jump right in. So here we have the root bone. I'm going to go ahead and add a capsule collider, change the radius down quite a bit, move up the end, and then edit the point by clicking there and just slide it down. So I could play around and get this perfect. This is good enough for me. You don't have to use a capsule collider. You could use a box collider. And that actually has a couple pros where it's not going to roll so much. But let's go ahead and we'll watch what happens. So if I hit play, I forgot the rigid body. Oops. So you got to have that. I'm going to go ahead and hit play now. And you'll see the Minotaur kind of just rolls. Did you see that? And he rolls back and forth, depending on the shape of the capsule. Now, this is actually a pretty good capsule. But if this was a little bit smaller or more sphere, uh, spherical like that, as, as you throw it, he would just keep on rolling around. Now, none of the other bones have any colliders or anything like that. And so that's why everything's going into the floor or whatever. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the... Let's go to just basically one arm. Let's find where that's at. So probably spine. That's good. In order to do the arm, we'd actually have to add rigid bodies to the spine, to the spine, and to the arm. Because it's basically like you're trying to chain all these together. So instead of doing that, let's just do something really easy. And let's go to the left leg here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a, a box collider this time. And a rigid body. And then a configurable joint. There's a lot of different joints. These just seem to work the best for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change the size. I'm going to zoom in right there, go to the box collider, and I'm going to go ahead and just scale this down. The scale is 111. I'm going to try, I don't know, like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And that's not bad for that bone right there. Let's see where the next bone starts. Okay, so I want this bone to go all the way to the end of that bone. So I can turn this edit collider on, grab here, drag it out, and there's my bone. And I can kind of just move it till it looks perfect. So good enough, right? Now what I need to do is with this configurable joint, go back to that leg and there is a connect to body. You need to put the root there. And then I can also go X motion. Let's go um, limited, limited, limited. Basically just change all of these to limited. And so that you don't have to edit this every time. I just go ahead and go uh, copy component. That way on my next bone, I can just copy that down. Going over here. And I'm going to go ahead and edit the joint angular stuff. So as you go in here, this red one is going to be how much it can move back and forth. So I do want it to be able to move forward a little bit. So from here, it's going to be able to go up here all the way back like that. So that's an okay joint. So it can go back and forth. Now this green, how much it can go side to side. I don't want it that as much. And then this one is kind of the same. I just make it a little like that. And now this leg will kind of pivot. Now, I do want to show you a mistake that I make a lot. I sometimes would forget to do the connected body. Let's look at what happens if I just delete this, okay? So I'm going to go none, like that. And let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So you'll see that my leg just kind of does its own thing. And here's this rigid body rolling around on the ground. Kind of weird stuff going on, right? And so we don't want that. Is there a rigid body? There is. It's using gravity, so I don't know why it didn't just fall down. Rigid body box collider, probably because there's a, a configurable joint. If, if you didn't have this, this right here, this, this rigid body would fall. So the leg would fall separately of the body. And so that's why you need to start to join these together. So I'm going to go ahead and slide the root right there. And now we're going to try this again. And right there, did you see how the leg moved a little bit and it just basically stops rolling? And so now we have a configurable joint and you're starting to get the 
rigid body going and the ragdoll physics going. Let's go ahead and finish this leg out. So this leg, do the same thing. Rigid body, box collider, and then configurable joint. And I'll just go ahead and copy and paste. So paste component values. Instead of dragging and dropping the root bot bone for the, the connect body, we do we just go up the hierarchy. So it's leg L. So this bone is going to be connected to the bone above it, which is connected to the root, root bone. So pretty straightforward that way. Let's go ahead and edit the joint here. We want this not to go forward very much because it's a knee, but it can go backwards quite a bit. Um, not very much side to side. So this green joint, very limited like this. And we're good to go there. Going down, I'm going to go ahead and add a configurable joint here. Paste values so that we can um, edit the X motions and the Y motions and the angulars. This doesn't need to go very much side to side. In fact, that would like break an ankle if you did that. But it can go up and down like that. So this thing can pivot a little bit like that. And we're good. Now I'm going to skip a bone on this one. And it, it already has a rigid body. Why would I do that? Well, just to show you kind of what would happen and show you that you don't technically need a bone on everything. So going over to the foot, add a rigid body here, add a box collider. And again, you could use capsule collider and then also a configurable joint. And this is all you have to do over and over and over again. So I will paste values, edit this, this one. Oops, that's way too much for the green. Ah, move it like that and just down. You can kind of play around with this, get whatever you want. And that's good. If if it's not giving you the correct angles, for whatever reason, if the bones are messed up, you can actually add an empty, put it to parent it to this bone, and then you can actually change the rotation. So for example, if I change the rotation of this, let's try this. Do you see how it actually would change where that configurable joint is basically oriented? So if the orientation is, is wrong, that's a really easy way to fix it. Let's go ahead and change the box collider so it's not so big. Maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. What do you think? Yeah, sure, good enough. <laughs> yeah, sure, good enough. Um, so that's the foot. This leg doesn't have any colliders. This leg does. We're going to change this to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and then edit it a little bit more. Make sure I put a 0 0.2. We have to have something to mention. And I'm going to edit this. And the nice thing is the bone is oriented in along the mesh, so that's great. You might get some some models from other people like the asset store where the bones aren't looking the correct way. Here's the leg and then here's the root. You can see all of these different bones and that they're looking good. Let's hit play and look at what happens. There you go. Do you see how it has now right there is kind of doing some weird stuff, right? Let's try and look at the bone and see what's going on. Oh, it's because we didn't put the hoof parented to anything. So if we go here, remember, it has to be parented to the bone ahead of it. So this one was also parented to the wrong one, thus leading to some strange results. Let's check it now. Oh, much better. Right? And there's always a little bit of, of wobble, which is kind of fun. You can add, you could create by right clicking, create a physical material and then just increase the static fr friction up to like one. And same with the dynamic friction and it'll roll around a whole lot less. Now, if you want to kind of see something cool that you can do with this, you can use the same effect on flags, on cloth, on things hanging. I'm going to go to this root and make it uh, is kin kinematic. So this thing will not fall, this root bone. This leg should just basically dangle as if it's, you know, the animal's asleep or dead or whatever. I'm going to turn it like this so that it dangles a little bit better and you can see it. So let's hit play. And you see how that the leg just kind of dangles like that. <laughs> how cool is that? Now you can apply it to the whole body, which I've already done. So let's go ahead and look at that. I'm going to load up a scene. So here I have a scene with a lot of blocks. We're going to have this thing fall and kind of hit these blocks and see what happens. This model has already been rigged for ragdoll physics. So each of these bones, as you can see, have different colliders. Right here, I did box colliders. Right here, I did uh, capsule colliders. There's no collider here because I didn't really need it. Um, the body has a few colliders inside of it as well. The tail does not have a collider, so that's just going to be straight. If I really want to go crazy, I could obviously put colliders on that too, and it'd look better. Same with the fingers, same with this, uh, the ring in the nose, but pretty simplistic, all the same. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to maximize this on play so we can, well, maybe not. It's kind of fun to watch it both ways. So let's go and see what happens. 
<laughs> Look out how cool that is, right? And now again, this arm is kind of oriented really, really wrong. An arm shouldn't bend that way. Well, actually that doesn't look too bad. A little hyperextension going on. But if I want to, I can go in and fix the configurable joint to have less rotation and it would look better. You can see that it's kind of moving like this constantly. There's a lot of different things you can do to, to fix this. You could actually go into the bones themselves. So right here and angular drag, I could increase quite a bit in the rigid body. I could, I could add a physical material to all of this so that it has more static friction and the like. But that is ragdoll physics in a nutshell. Um, we love making these videos for you guys. I hope that you enjoy it. Thumbs up, please. Comment below. If there's an easier way for me to do this, I love learning from you guys too. So if there's if there's techniques that you know about that I haven't mentioned here, please go in the comments. People like reading those as well. Consider supporting us on Patreon so we can keep making videos like this. Follow us on Facebook. All those good things. Have a great day, guys, and make sure to check out some of these cool other videos. Here's a video about For the King. It's a review, and that's what's inspired this tutorial. Awesome. That's enough talking. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Bye.